Hello and welcome back to Photography Life. In today's video, I'll show you some of my favorite landscape photography tips and tricks. Now my goal is to mention some things that you may not have heard before, but techniques that I find very valuable in the field. So let's jump right in. First one, my favorite, flip your photos horizontally and then flip them right back. Why would you do that? Well, it lets you see your photos with a new eye. I can't demonstrate this by showing you my own photos because luckily you haven't been looking at them for hours on end. But here's some famous images flipped horizontally. The longer you've looked at them before, the more unusual these mirrored versions will look. Now, take your own photos, your best photos, and flip them horizontally too. I guarantee that you'll see them in a different light. Countless times this trick has helped me straighten landscape photos that are crooked, crop them to make my message stronger, or even change the elements that I brighten and darken to emphasize in the photo. Tip number two. This is just something that makes your life easier as a photographer and saves you time. If you ever take panoramas or HDR photos in the field, you should do something called bookending your photos. This just means at the beginning of your panorama, take a photo of your hand. Then do everything just like normal, finish the panorama, and take another photo of your hand. The reason here is pretty simple. When you're sorting through your photos later, it can be a big waste of time to figure out where one panorama ends and the next begins. But if you bookend your photos, you never even have to think about it. You know exactly where each one starts. Tip number three, Wait for patterns. The natural world is filled with them. If you miss a good photo opportunity, the right moment passes you by, there's a very good chance that you'll have that opportunity again. It might take 15 minutes, it might take a couple days, but light repeats itself, weather repeats itself, and the same with a moving subject like waves in the ocean. I once spent an amazing sunrise doing photography from the top of a hill, and right after I left, a rainbow appeared where I'd been standing. Now it faded before I could capture a photo, but I went back to the same spot and 30 minutes later, another one appeared. I got this shot because I waited around for the pattern to happen again. Tip number four, refine your photos in the field. It's the best chance that you'll get to fix any problem, so use it wisely. And I'm not just talking about reviewing your photo to double check sharpness, I'm talking about composition. I know that it's different for some photographers, but personally, the best composition that I take at a landscape is usually one of the later ones. And that's because most of my effort in the field is focused on making the next photo better than the one that I just got. There's almost always something that can be improved. Tip number five is to unify the message of your image. For example, say that you've got dark lighting, high contrast, and an intense subject. Your entire photo at that point is very unified, but that won't always be the case. Take a look at this photo. By most standards, the subject is interesting and the light is beautiful, but somehow this photo just doesn't work. Why not? It doesn't send a unified message. The lighting on one hand is gentle. It's trying to convey a peaceful scene. Then the composition doesn't have that much movement to it. It's pretty balanced and static. But the subject is chaotic and the water is moving quickly around it. And this message is very incompatible with the light. So I waited around for the sky to get more dramatic and I picked a composition with more movement. Now the entire photo is unified. It's a much stronger image. So keep in mind your subject, your light, and your composition. They should all be on the same page. Tip number six, ask yourself questions. And this one gets into the nitty gritty details of why a photo succeeds. In short, it makes the viewer feel a certain emotion. And this is something that you can accomplish the easiest by being deliberate. To convey the right emotion, should your photo be balanced or imbalanced? Should you zoom in and isolate a detail or go for a wide angle lens? And going back to the previous tip, is the lighting right for the subject? If not, what can you do to unify the photo? This is why I love asking questions in the field. The more decisions that you make consciously rather than accidentally, the more refined your photo will be. Tip number seven, Move your feet. I often see photographers set up their tripod at eye level and then stay in exactly the same place even as the landscape changes around them. But the best photos don't always happen so easily. 
Instead, experiment with different angles, different foregrounds, just move around. For example, I took this photo at eye level, and to me the plant is just overpowering the background. So I took the opportunity to find a slightly higher vantage point where I took this photo instead. And to me, it works a lot better for the message that I want to convey. Now tip number eight, nearing the end, know your camera by heart. Sometimes even in landscape photography, a couple seconds can make all the difference in the world. You need to know how to operate your camera practically blindfolded. Every dial, every button, every menu item that you use, go ahead and even create a custom menu of your most common settings. Almost every camera today lets you do this. When you know your camera as well as possible, you'll have more success, especially in difficult conditions, and difficult conditions can make for some of the best photos. Last tip, number nine, be diligent about which photos you display. Let's say that you made a thousand smoothies and you only ever let people taste the 10 best. They'd think that every smoothie you make is amazing. In landscape photography, the exact same thing holds true. Even Ansel Adams said that one successful photo a month is a good crop. So don't feel pressured into showing too many photos. Put a lot of care into the work that you display. A couple bad photos can drag down the quality of an otherwise amazing portfolio. And that covers it. I guess a tenth tip, if you just want an even number, is to keep practicing, having fun, and learning. It's why we make these videos, and I hope that you've gotten something out of this one. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Photography Life. This is Spencer Cox, and I will see you soon.